Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Trois Dice, which, as you might imagine, it's a dice game based on Trois. An absolutely fantastic Euro game that I've already done two full playthroughs for. You can check those out if you would like to see more. But this is the multiplayer roll and write game. And being a roll and write, you can play as well if you would like. I will include a link in the description to Pearl Games' website where they have the game sheet. And because it's a play along, I will explain what we can do rather than just jumping right in and explaining as we go. Before we get started though, I'd recommend you turn the subtitles on and put them to the Klingon channel. If I've made any mistakes, they will hopefully be corrected there. And if you would like to support me and help me keep making more videos like this, it's patreon.com forward slash slicker drips. And you can see videos early and vote on them and stuff. It's all good, isn't it? So we are in Tua. It's the Middle Ages. I think it's a kind of slight prequel because we're constructing the buildings that we put our meeples into in the board game Tua. Well, that's just a side, it doesn't really matter. So we're all set up here. We have these plaza tiles that are double-sided and the little arrows tell you what color the other side is. And these plazas are gonna determine the colors of the dice because apart from the event die here, the dice are transparent. You can uh, see the plaza through them. It defines that if, if this was on here, that would be a red one because it's on the red plaza tile. We set to day one, there are eight days and we have basically two turns in each day. There is morning and afternoon. The one thing I haven't done is filled in the columns here. Now this is variable. You see all of these spaces, they are for numbers. We can just do it the basic way. I think that's what I'll do. Just number your columns one to six. In future games, you can roll a die to determine the leftmost value and then the town crier, the person in charge of the dice, uh, decides whether the numbers are going up or down. And then, so if I rolled a three, this would be three and I could say, okay, we're going up four, five, six, one, two, uh, just to alter how the buildings will line up with the numbers. And you can also choose expert mode where the town crier chooses the position of every number. But for now, let's just do one to six. So everyone has the same numbers. And if you do determine them by yourselves, the columns all have to be the same numbers. So in playing the game, the town crier takes all of the dice and gives them a roll. And you can see this is day one and this is the morning. These four slots are where the dice go. We put them in ascending order here. And if there is ever uh, a tie with the event die and uh, transparent die, the event die is considered lower and goes first. So first we roll the die, then the second step is to resolve the events. Now there is no event for the first two days. So basically got four turns where we don't have to worry about events. But in the future, the event die is going to destroy a plaza that it's on, basically make it flip over and turn to a different color perhaps. But it's also going to affect, like say the event was happening now, it would be red four. My red four column would be destroyed. So not the entire thing, just the red section. Anything I've already built in that column can stay. But for the future, I, am, I cross everything I haven't already built out. And that uh, also goes for the link bonuses. You can't get them anymore because the spaces would be crossed out. So then you perform an action. And we can all choose from any of the transparent dice. So the... The event is uh, put over there because we're still going to flip the plaza and stuff. So we simultaneously choose one of these dice. Now there is a little expansion, it calls it, in the box that is the Banquets and Raids expansion. That's these little tiles here. Basically, while they are on the banquet side, they are little benefits that you can have if you choose the die that's in that plaza. But when the event die happens to land on that plaza, and unfortunately it has right away on this one, when we flip the plaza, we also flip the banquet onto the raid side, and that is going to be a, a, a negative consequence for drafting that die in the future. So you choose a die. You do have some dice manipulation. Your influence here, you start off with three of each resource circled. Your influence can be used to adjust a die up or down by one for everyone that you use. Numbers don't wrap, so as you go from one to six, you have to spend five influence. And you can also spend knowledge. Every two knowledge will let you change the color of a die that you have picked. So as standard in this round, we've got a red five, a yellow six, and another yellow six. And they have costs next to them as well. So there is nothing for free this round because the event die went there. For either a gold, an influence, or a knowledge, you can have the red five. It's one or two gold for these. So you might as well go for the one gold to cost one unless you really want to spend money for some reason. So what actions can we take? We can gain resources. You pay for the die that you are drafting and you can gain resources with it. So I could gain five influence or six money from this. 
Now there are also little citizens along your resource tracks. If you gain, anytime you gain a resource, you circle it, and when you spend it, you cross it out. But if you should gain the resource next to, say, the red citizen, you would circle a red citizen on your citizen track here, going from left to right. Same for your resources, left to right. You can construct a prestige building. They are basically the first row of each color. There are fortresses in the red zone. Now, if I was to use the red five here, for example, I could build the red five fortress. So I would do an outline around this building. It would get me a white citizen, so I would circle that. But it also lets me draw around this fortress silhouette. You see all of the fives here have this fortress silhouette around them. I'd be able to draw over that uh, silhouette to show that the five column is now protected and any events for the rest of the game in my five column would have no effect on me. Your great hall needs a yellow die. And these will give you different benefits based on how many dice of particular colors are available to pick from. So not a great combination for this particular turn uh, because uh, one and two are basically for every red die that's out here. So it'd be one red die. You can have three influence or two red citizens. Three and four for every yellow die, take three gold or two yellow citizens. And for five and six, they're six right now, unless you adjusted them. Uh, it's uh, for every white die, get three knowledge. And for every white die, get two white citizens. Absolute rubbish for this round because there are no white dice available and that would get you nothing. It would get you the building. And finally, down here in the white, we have the good old cathedral. Constructing one of the cathedral spaces will give you access to a character. And there is a little symbol next to the character to show you which building row that character relates to. They're basically going to give you points for every building of that type that you have built. So if I was to do uh, the white one here, it would reward me at the end of the game for every fortress that I have built. There is a little twist with these characters though. For your first two, when you get one, so if I got the fortress man, I would draw a times one in this space here. And so I would get one point for every fortress I've built at the end of the game. My third and fourth characters in the cathedral, though, would give me times two multipliers for whichever row they relate to. And if I was to do five or six characters in a game, the fifth and sixth give you a times three multiplier for those rows. So that's the prestige building. Then we have the work buildings, the second row of each color. We have the Count's Palace, the City Hall and the Bishopric. That's where you put your meeples in uh, normal tour. Uh, anyway, these all work the same. They give you citizens of that particular color. You can look at the lozenges. <laughs> I really like that the real book uses lozenge. The lozenges contain link bonuses. If you were to fill in the buildings either side of a link bonus, you'll get what's inside the link bonus. So it's citizens or influence or money or knowledge. But remember, if a side has been destroyed by an event, you can never claim that link bonus. We've seen the various ways you can get things. Your citizens are always marked on these tracks. Fill them in from left to right. Your, I think it's 15th and 20th citizens of a color will give you a reward. So your 15th will give you a certain building. You can see the shape that it relates to. And your 20th citizen of a particular color will give you one each of the other colors of citizen. Now, if you fill up your third column, you get one of each resource. And for your sixth and 11th columns, so one of each color in those columns, you can build a work building of your choice. At the end of the game, you get points for each row if you have gotten that character by constructing their cathedral space. You get a point for every two leftover resources of each type. There is nothing for leftover ones, so three resources still only gets you one point. And you get a point for every citizen you gained as well. Play with the most points wins. So let's look at the banquets that we've got out here just finally before we get started. This one we're never actually going to get to see. This is uh, if you use this die to build a fortress, gain a red citizen and a yellow or white. This one here that you do have the option of this turn is you spend one knowledge to change this die's color rather than the usual two. And this banquet side is if the black die attacks this plaza, ignore it and treat it as if it was a transparent die but this will get flipped over to its raid side, its negative effect at the end of the round. Okay, it's a lot of information up front, but hey, it's play along. So these are the dice you've got to pick from. What would you like to do? So I am definitely 
it, it, it's push your luck really whether you want to defend yourself against the event I'm going to I am going to go for the red five so I need to pay something I think I will pay I'll just pay a money to be able to use this die and so I'm doing red five I am building a fortress with it so that lets me just highlight all of the fortresses here to remind me that any fives on the event die I ignore and also, I gain a white citizen, so I can circle that. And that is everything from my turn. Marty, I think he's going to get an early start in the cathedral. He's going to pay one knowledge to change this to a white die. So he's allowed to do that because of the banquet tile rather than paying two normally. So he does need to pay money. And he was tempted to, you know, it's six money if you use this to get resources. Uh, but he is going to build his first cathedral space and gain the benefit of the person here. Uh, so that is going to be a point for every uh, bishopric building at the end of the game. It's his first cathedral character. It's his first character, so it's times one in there. And if he can get loads, maybe he can get uh, a load of points here. If he can get his times three there and get all of the characters, that'll be like 18 points. We'll see what he can do there. So have you picked your die and done your action? If not, Pause it a sec, because I am going to go to the afternoon now. So the afternoon is going to be on these four spaces, and this is going to rotate throughout the game. Uh, we do need to flip this plaza, though, but you can see that this plaza, and in fact all of the plazas that the banquet tiles are on, are plazas that stay the same colour the entire game. So this uh, banquet tile now flips to its raid side, and it means that if you want this die, it's going to cost you an influence as well as what the position on the wheel says. We're into the afternoon though, so I can roll the dice again. And let's see what we've got available to us. So we've got two, three, five, six. Oh, that's unfortunate. It's not too unfortunate, actually. Although it will be later on in the game. Uh, this is basically, you can ignore this black die. It wasn't going to destroy anything yet anyway in day one. But you can treat this as if it were a translucent die. So if you would like to use a white five, this is your opportunity. What would I like? I'm going to pay... Oh, it is tempting, you know. I, I, you could have paid one money early on to get six more. But I, I'm going to pay another money, and I am going to do a number three fortress here and protect my three column, which gives me a yellow citizen. I only have one money left. Marty is going to go free. Yeah, he's, he's going to do another character. Let's see if all of this pays off for him. Uh, so this is going to be in the uh, the palace. So that's going to be another times one multiply. But this means his next character now will be worth two points for everything in that row at the end of the game. He could have done a five as well, but if he's going for the characters, he wants to try and get a white five later on. Okay, so that is the first day. We are going to move on now. So at the end of the day, we still need to do all of the stuff of the plaza flips and all of that stuff, but uh, this flips over. That so means in the future... If this is a transparent die, it's treated as a black die. And so an extra event will happen now for the rest of the game. We turn this over to day two. So still no events, still nothing's going to be destroyed. You don't have to worry about that until day three. Uh, but we roll the dice again. So this uh, raid isn't going to happen until uh, day three's afternoon. But hey, we, we still got to worry about it. So we've got a one there. So the free die... <laughs> isn't available so we've got yellow four and you can change its color for one knowledge yellow five yellow six i think i am a bit worried about ending up with no money so i am kind of tempted you can't take the the event die by the way you are you're supposed to do this it's more important to to remind yourself that you need to flip this plaza at the end of the round this is the first time that it's actually going to flip a plaza that's not just the same color on the other side I'm having a bit of a worry. No reds have come out, and yeah, I'm worried about not having any money. So I'm going to do a resource action. I'm going to spend a money to gain five money. One, two, three, four, five. And that's a yellow citizen again. I could have actually spent an influence to get an extra money. Yeah, I'll spend an influence, so that would have been a yellow six to get an extra money. Marty is going to spend... A knowledge to adjust the color of this one again. That's what he did yesterday, isn't it? Uh, and yeah, he's just going to go. So no points yet, but he's going to go cathedraling again. Uh, treat this as a white four. So for the what is it, the city hall, uh, he's going to get 
two points for everyone that he puts in there. But he didn't pay for the die yet, though. You wanna, he's going to pay an influence. So he's hedges bets around all of his resources. So that's it for the afternoon. We flip this plaza, so that's going to be white next time it comes around. And we move on to the afternoon. What have we got? One, two, four, six. So we've got two plazas are getting uh, destroyed. But yeah, no, nothing on your player sheets yet. Day three, that starts. So what have we got to choose from? All we've got is red one, white six. I'm going to go for, since it's free, the red number one fortress. I'm going for protection. Monty's just <laughs> not bothering. That gets me a red citizen. I think Monty, yeah, he, he is going to do some fortressing as well. Not be entirely reckless. Just, just quite reckless. Okay, so that's it for the day, isn't it? We need to flip. Well, this plaza never flips. Uh, this plaza will become white, though. Yeah, a lot of potential for white dice to come out to move the day along. It's day three, so now the event die is going to cause damage. It is going to destroy something on your play sheet if you've not protected it with a fortress. So what have we got? Three. I'm happy with that. Uh, so we need two, three, three, six. Okay, then. So that's getting destroyed. And right now, if you haven't protected your three column with a fortress, you need to destroy everything in your yellow three section. Unless you've already built in there. You don't lose those buildings. But uh, for Marty, that means both of these. That's potential two points. That's uh, gone for him. I am fine. So what should we do? I could, well, seeing how things have gone, and I can get a link bonus for this, I'm going to pay two money to grab this red six and do my six fortress. Now that's giving me a white citizen, but also I've done a link bonus now, so I get another white citizen. Marty is, of course, leaning straight at the cathedral. He's doing it again. And, uh, yeah, what's this going to be? Over here, that's his extra times two multiplier. Still no citizens or anything from that. And so that's, that's it there. We flip this plaza over. Got to pause if you haven't done your action yet. We move on to the afternoon. And what have we got? Three. Oh, that's a black die, isn't it? Four. Oh, dear. For Marty, anyway. So we have... These are black dice and can't be used. So basically, I haven't protected four yet. So my white four section is destroyed. And uh, three is safe. Marty's three section. Uh, he's already done the cathedral, so that's safe. And the same for four. He's not protected it with a, a fortress, but he's already done the cathedral building. So the more expensive options left. So white six... I've written this in the wrong space, haven't I? That's meant to be up there, because what Marty's going to do, I'll just do this now, uh, he's going to spend his, this is his last gold, this could really restrict him, uh, to build this space, because he's now got, I'm going to have to cross this out and be all scruffy, times three here, so three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen points just from Cathedral so far, and that one's protected, so hopefully he can get it in the future. I have gold. Oh yeah, and he's spending an influence to make it a five, by the way. <laughs> I'm going to leave that off. What do I want to do? Do I really want to spend both of my influence to protect the four column? I want to protect the two column, really. Oh, and it's actually two money and an influence just to have that red six. Maybe I want the white six. I could get some white citizens. Or I could get scoring for over here. Or I could just get a load of knowledge and change the color of dice later on. Yeah, I think I'm going to get six knowledge. Cross this off. Six knowledge. which is going to give me a white citizen. Okay, everybody done? Let's move on to day four. And uh, flip this plaza back to yellow. Let's see what we've got. One, four, six, six. Okay, so that is a black die as well as this one. So we've got white four. It's already happened, hasn't it? White six has also happened. I'm protected. Marty isn't protected. 
everybody has already built the cathedral, so that's safe. Yeah, you can cross off your link bonuses if you've destroyed things because you're not going to be able to get them. Okay, then, so for Marty, he's got no money, so he's going to have to pick this red one. He's already protected himself, so he could gain an influence, or be much better to, yeah, gain two red citizens. I do have money. I've got loads of knowledge as well if I want to change the color of things. I'm going to go for red one, but boost it with an influence to a two, and you guessed it, it's fortress time, which is a red citizen here and a link bonus. So if I just get a yellow, I can get one of each resource. Okay, so we're done there. I need to flip this plaza. That one doesn't flip. And move on to the afternoon. What have we got? Two, four, five, six. Remember, this is a money and an influence if you'd like this red five. But white four is getting attacked again. That's okay, really, isn't it? Even though, uh, yeah, the more events are happening, they keep happening to white four. So Marty has no money. Does he keep being restricted to basically this die all the time? Or does he want to just gain two money? No, I think these are worth two points each. He could get himself three influence or two yellow citizens. Oh no, it's uh, it's it's yellow too, isn't it? Get himself two red meeples or no, he'll, he'll just get, it's worth two points as well thanks to his uh, scoring. He'll get uh, two yellow citizens. Didn't have to pay anything for that. And for me, money and an influence. Oh, it's money and two influence actually because I've got that extra cost. Could finish my fortresses off. But I think, I think I'm going to do the same thing because I, I would like yellow citizens. So yeah, I'm going to go for the free yellow too as well. See my, my going around the buildings has gotten sloppier and sloppier. Okay, so that's destroyed and becomes red. And we are moving on to day five of eight. Let's see what we can do here. So we've got one, two, three, six. So events, we've got yellow one. We're both protected on that. White three has already happened, so we're okay there. So we've got red two, yellow six. Marty, yeah, he can take this, but he's going to have to pay an influence or a knowledge. Marty, yeah, he's gonna build, gonna build a palace over here because that gives him four red citizens. But he's gonna have to pay. He'll pay a knowledge to do that. Marty's messed up on resources. <laughs> For me, let's see. Yeah, all these events are messing up these as well because there aren't as many dice of those colors. Well, I don't think I took, I definitely didn't take one of each resource like I was meant to. Doing this, but I can change the color of dice, can't I? As well, I need to remember that. I'm gonna just spend, just spend one money. Do I want a red too? I could change the color to yellow because, yeah, I'm gonna change it to a yellow too. Oh, then I would have to spend. I want a yellow one, really. Is what I'm basically saying. So I'd like to link these up and get the money. I could just let's just keep it a red too. Yeah, I've paid. I've paid the money. I'm just gonna have this, and yeah, let's have some uh, let's have some red citizens. Keeping them all balanced will get me some free buildings. Okay, that was the morning, and we need to flip plazas onto the evening. And what have we got? One, two, three, five. Oh, the final bonus goes away. So yellow five. I'm protected in fives. Marty is not, and we'll see what the final punishment is in a minute. So Marty, yes, is restricted. He can still choose this one, but it would cost him. No, he's only got one influence, so no, he couldn't. He's restricted to this one, so he's got a red one. Does that mean he's just going to gain an influence? He could spend his influence to make it red too, and then he's protected. Yeah... Then he's got absolutely no resources. They all seemed uh, good earlier. But he is protected now. And as for me... Now building one of these yellow buildings would be quite good right now because there are two red dice. Now you changing the die colour to take an action doesn't actually change what colour these are in terms of getting these rewards. 
So I could get a load of influence. I could get six influence or t or four red citizens from this. I think I'm going to go for influence. So I'm going to use two knowledge to change the color of this die. So I can do yellow one and get this. And that gives me three for every red die. There's two out there, six influence. Which is going to give me a red citizen. Okay. I think we've both done things. So we get to see the final punishment now. You may not use knowledge to change the color of this die. Okay, on to day six, the morning. We got two, two, three, six. So Marty, we should do his earlier because he is restricted to, he can take a red two. So he's basically gonna have to take that for influence and nothing else. Oh, this is, oh, we, we haven't done events, have we? Uh, yellow, white two, Marty's protected, I'm protected. Yellow three has already happened. Okay, so it didn't matter <laughs> for us anyway. Yeah, he's done his. What would I like? I've done my red twos as well. There are two red dice again. I could change the color of this. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. So I'm, I'm gonna, two knowledge to change the color over here. I could do with some scoring for some of these buildings. And I will get four red citizens. Citizens are all points. Then we've got flipping there and there. And it's the afternoon. So we've got one, four, five, six. And it's, a, it's kind of a good job because Marty would have to pay an influence to get this. So I think... Now, if, if nothing is available for free and you can't afford any dice, you can have one of each resource as your turn. But I think because Marty can afford this, it's zero gold but an influence and he can pay the influence, but all he gets from it is you know, he's got no knowledge to change the color or anything. He just kind of spends an influence to get an influence, which gets him a citizen. You should not have left him with no money. Well, he shouldn't have done it. It's his decision. For me... Let's see, some scoring would be nice. I think let's, let's pay an influence to change this to a uh, five. Yeah, and also pay a, let's pay a knowledge. I've got a lot of knowledge to spare. So that's gonna give me a point for every cathedral I've built. But basically I wanna, I'm going to build some that I'm not as bothered about first so I can get good points for my fortress. Get at least two each for them, I, I hope. And, oh, I didn't do the event again, did I? Uh, Marty's red sixes are destroyed. Mine are safe. So flip that, and it's... Oh, this is day seven. Okay, so there's four turns left. What are we going to do? One, four, four, five. Again, Marty, he could, he could choose the white four, actually. He can spend influence to take it. And he, he isn't allowed that one. That's a black die, isn't it? So white one. Oh, that's, that's a shame. That was Marty's last character as well. Oh, but he's protected his ones. It's all good. But unfortunately, he can't use that to fill it in. Uh, white one, uh, red five. Red five is not protected, though. Look at all of this that's been destroyed on Marty's. At the same time, he has got all of these points for rows, and he's got a fair few citizens himself. He could do a white four and get a load of knowledge. Yeah, he can't build a building in there, so that's just what he's going to have to do, I think. So he can pay an influence to take the die, and then he gets four knowledge. Just give him a white citizen. As for me, white four is no good, unless I want knowledge, which I don't. I can go for red four, so I've got my last fortress, which would be good for when they're worth points. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. Spend a gold to go for a red four. Gets me two yellow citizens. You see the laziness of the outlining creeping in. And yes, we're done there, aren't we? Yeah, we've had the events. They don't need to be flipped because they're the same color. The final, oh no, that's the, it's only the morning. Calm down. I thought that, that day went quick. It's because we haven't had half of it. One, two, three, six. So, white one, protected there. 
Monty, again, all he can afford is this. He's going to... He's missed out on so many turns, though, hasn't he? So he can use a Knowledge to get the die, and then he'll use an Influence to boost it to a 3, so he can get 3 money. That'll give him a Yellow Citizen. So now he'll have some options. I... Ah, oh, Marty's three building is crossed out because what I'm going to do would would have been great. would have been even better for him. I'm going to take this yellow three and uh, build this because there are two yellow dice out, three gold for each, six gold. So that's another yellow citizen. I'd like some white ones. Now I'd like these to be worth points. I've only got two more actions left. Oh, no. Okay, so... The final day. We've got some high numbers. Three, four, five, five. So that is red five happening again. And what are we going to do? So Marty can actually take things now. He wants a white one. Does he want influence so he can get a white one next time for sure? Well, it doesn't really matter. He's only done two fortresses, hasn't he? It's worth three points, though, if he does it. Three. And then six up there, so it would be nine points if he can get that cathedral in. He's going to pay a money for this red four. And I think he's going to change it to yellow. Just get these two citizens, because this is worth two points, citizens are worth two points. Maybe that's a good idea. For me, points for these would actually be quite good. That would be three points, but can I do better? Just getting three citizens would be better than that. Getting some white citizens would be better than that. So I'd get to build another building. But that building wouldn't be worth points. No, oh, it would get me citizens, which would be worth points. Let's build white three. That's free. I'm starting to think now, have I... <laughs> have I am I too behind after all of this? Because Marty's done all these cathedrals. That gets to be too... White citizens, which lets me build any work building. None of them are worth any points yet. But this one over here gets me the bonus in the middle. So that's four more red citizens. So one more red citizen lets me build a cathedral or a great hall. Okay. The final turn of the game. And we've got... What is it? Oh, no. I hope you wanted a three. So the three comes first here. And so yellow three gets attacked. It's already happened. So actually, it could have been worse on events, couldn't it? So if Marty wants to build a three, it had better be over here. So it's cost him a, It's basically costing him a point in resources to gain, what, two points in citizens? It's just that he's got no influence. Only one knowledge, so he can't change the colour of dice. But it is worth a point here as well. A point for everything in this row. It's a shame it couldn't have gone to a better row. Or that he could have changed the colour of something. Yeah, he will pay... He'll pay his two gold then to build here. Gets two more red citizens. And yeah, that's, that's Marty's last turn. For me, let's see, I could build three here and here. Although well, I probably want to... Adjust, don't I? Because, yeah, building a cathedral is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points. I wish I'd built more cathedrals. So that's going to cost me a money and then two influence to knock that down to a one. So I can build this cathedral. So I get a point for each of those things. And that's it, isn't it? I don't feel like either of us got much done. So, that, yeah, that's it. So your scoring for everything you didn't get a character for, zero for that row. Uh, but Marty gets a point for each of those, which is three. Leftover resources, nothing. And then two points for every great hall. He didn't build one. Uh, two points for each of these is four. And then leftover resources, uh, he spent that, I believe. Either way, one isn't going to get your points. Three points for each cathedral. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. And then a point for each of these. He didn't build one. Leftover knowledge. He's got one, but that's not worth a point. Citizens. He's got five, ten, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So his final score is thirty-three, thirty-seven, 
40. Oh, I'm supposed to do this bit. Uh, 22. Yeah, I, I think I've... I, yeah, I've, I'm, I'm fairly confident going into this. So I've got, what, six on here. For characters, though, it's going to be a big, fat nothing. Two on there. Resources left over. I've got one, two, three, four, five. So that's going to be two points. Nothing for the leftover one. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's going to be three there. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Knowledge left, which is three points. So here I've got three, five, eight, ten, sixteen. And I think I've got more citizens. So I'm six behind Marty on here. So fifteen, twenty, four, twenty six. 28. So yeah, I think that is enough. So it's that 34, 44. So quite close though. Not the terrible thing that I thought it was. I think when something came around and it was like, it was just a one on gold or something and it seemed a bit rubbish when Marty had none, I think it probably would have been good to just get that because he was left for an awful lot of turns not being able to do anything. The battery indicator is running out though, so I hope you enjoyed this. If you'd like to see what I think about it, it's linked in the description or on the screen very, very shortly. Thank you for watching and I'll see you for the next game. Bye everyone.